Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to create a custom iterator for the linked list class that we created earlier on in this series. While this is only tangentially related to linked lists, we're not going to be getting too much into what linked lists are, so it's not a big deal if you miss those earlier episodes. However, if you do want a refresher, I would recommend going back and rewatching them now. Or really, if you want to, you can rewatch the previous one and focus on the linked list, which was that middle ring of boxes that I had in the previous episode. Just in case you either missed those earlier episodes on linked list or aren't familiar with the concept of a linked list. Up here, though, we have this class linked list iterator. And it's important to note that basically any iterator is going to be a class or, in some cases, a struct. But in C++, the difference between a class and a struct is not that big. In other languages like Java or C Sharp, there's a fairly significant difference and very important differences between how structs and classes are treated and how they end up in particular being passed into methods and what happens to them as arguments. So it is important to consider the differences in those languages, but in here, the only difference is, is, is the default public or private for the most part. And beyond that, you don't even really need to worry about the differences between a class and a struct in C++. So it is just a class, nothing too special about it there. It's templated in this case, and to be fair, it'll be templated in most cases that you end up creating an iterator. And that's because most data structures, such as our linked list down here, you're going to want to be versatile enough in order to handle different data types, so you're going to template them. Which means that whatever units you have within there, such as in case it happens to be, in this case here, links, in case you have nodes in a tree, or nodes in a graph, those are typically also going to just end up with those being templated so that they can be used across doubles, floats, characters, integers, your own custom classes, etc. As a result, typically you'll have this, but it is not necessary. It is only necessary because of the fact that our links are templated. If I deleted that, for example, it would all of a sudden complain because it's like, hey, link doesn't exist without a template. It only exists if it's templated. Similarly, deriving off of iterator happens to be completely optional because of the fact that, once again, this is just a class. There are certain things within iterator that are useful. However, the fact of the matter is, is that pretty much everything we defined within here would work just as well as if I commented this section out here, with the exception of a few things that you'll see in here because it ends up being stuff that I'm using within iterator itself that are designed in order to help decouple this implementation here from this particular class here so as that we don't have to use specifically this name within here that much. This is a bit of a complicated declaration because of the fact that it ends up having this template here. And some of the complexity is a bit hidden, and you can see it sort of down here. And that's that there's actually five different templates that it takes in. However, as you can see down here, these last three already have defaults given to them. And in general, you're never going to end up using your own custom versions of those. You'll just use these default versions that are provided for you. And that's because the first thing that it does is this thing here, this iterator tag. And as you can see here, there's this whole little set of iterator tags in here. And these are just the different types or varieties of iterators that we ended up covering in the previous episode. In case you remember, we said that there were ones that were only for input, only for output. Forward iterators, where you can only go like in one direction on a singly linked list. And one important thing to note in this particular implementation, it differs from Strauss Strip's implementation in that forward iterator tag is derived off of both input and output iterator tag. In the C++ programming language, the book by Strauss Strip, the creator of C++, he ends up expressly saying that forward iterator tag is only derived off of input iterator tag, even though this version makes a bit more sense. And by a bit more sense, I mean a lot more sense. Then you have bidirectional iterator tag, which, once again, similar to forward iterator tag, where this just gives you the ability to go plus plus, this gives you the ability to go minus minus, and it's what we'll be using for our linked list example. Then you have random access, which happens to be what you end up doing in case you end up using a contiguous chunk of memory 
or a array or a list or some other form of cache that you can just jump around from basically like, okay, I'm up here, now I'm up here, then I can jump down to here. And you can do all of that just by changing a pointer, by adding some value to it, and you know that it will be valid. Then, after the tag, you have to supply what you're going to be iterating over. In our case, we're iterating over links, so that's what we pass in here. And this brings us to basically the rest of what is in iterator. Because we have this diff, and what diff is, is it just is saying how much memory does this class that you're iterating over take up in memory. And we don't have to worry about it. in this case, it's really only useful for a contiguous iterator because of the fact that you end up being able to go, if I'm going to jump forward 15 spots in memory, I need to be able to go, okay, what happens to be the size of whatever I happen to be doing times the number of jumps forward I'm making. So it would be 15 times the size of this class here. So this just allows you to cache that so as you can do it very rapidly. You don't have to recompute the size of your class at runtime. So ends up being a bit more efficient to do it this way. Also in here, it gives us a pointer and a reference. And the reason why it ends up having these, it allows us to be decoupled from that original class. So that all we have to do is pass in this link here. And then throughout here, if I want a link sub t pointer, I just put in the word pointer. I don't have to put in this, if I copy it down to here, do this, and do that. I don't have to have that explicitly in here. So it allows us to be a bit more decoupled in terms of how we actually end up having our class. So that is very important to note, and it has these different type defs within there, and this is something you can do with other classes also if you want to. But the nice thing about it is that this is already defaulted to either a pointer to this type of class or the reference of that type of class. And that allows us to never really have to supply those. It's only in rare situations that we'll actually provide custom pointers and custom references. And the only reason why you'd provide your own custom difference here is that in case you were working with some really weird situation where whatever you're pointing to, it does not match up with the actual size of contiguous memory that it represents. So those are very rarely going to be overloaded and typically you're just going to use the default. Then, similar to any other class, we need to construct it. It's useful to copy it, whether you want to just copy it in a constructor via the equals operator. Both of them happen to be common enough operations that you're going to want to end up having them. And then you technically don't need both of these. You will want one of them so as you can initially create a linked list iterator. So you need to have one of these two, but you don't need both of them. It just is a bit more convenient if you have both one that takes in a pointer and one that takes in a reference as your constructors. Then down here, we have our increment operators, and this is because of the fact that, once again, we end up being this bidirectional iterator. So we need to be able to go forward through the list and backwards through the list. And I know that we didn't cover all of these operators, such as we didn't cover this version of the plus plus operator. Basically what this one is, is this one here is where you put the plus plus before your linked list operator. So if I did something like plus plus this, this would end up recurring into this one here. However, if I did then this plus plus, it would end up calling into this operator here. So that's the difference. And I've somewhat avoided it because it's a bit of an arcane and a bit of a odd thing to actually focus on and think about. But the difference between putting the plus plus before something, though, so the difference between plus plus this and then this plus plus, is that in this version, we end up incrementing whatever we end up plus plusing before we return that value. So if I did something like int i equals plus plus this, what's going to end up happening with it is that it's going to do this increment and then it's going to assign it to i. Whereas if I do this other option here, what it's going to do is it's going to assign this to i, and then it's going to go back and increment this. So it might end up copying, might end up doing some other stuff, but what you'll note then is then here, this is three steps, and this one here is two steps. So this one ends up being a bit more efficient, which is why in general, 
sorry, this one up here ends up being a bit more efficient than this one down here because this one only has two steps in it. As well as also, we don't have this extra stuff involving memory where we have to create a copy and return the copy. So what ends up happening is that you'll very often see people use plus plus followed by some variable rather than that variable followed by plus plus unless they specifically want to actually use this version because this one is slightly more efficient. Similarly, we have decrement operators, so as we go backwards through our list, and these do the exact same thing as these just in the opposite direction. So whereas previously we were going to the next item, and really all that we're doing is that we have this pointer to a link, sub t, and when we want to go forward in the list, we end up going, okay, let's assign it to whatever's next in the list. When we want to go backwards, we assign it to whatever's previous in the list. We aren't going to modify the list at all with this, though there are some operations that you'll see when we get into how you can use iterators that do actually modify lists using iterators. And there are things like insert iterators, which is a different variation on an iterator, but those are also used in order to actually modify some container. And we'll get into those in the next episode as we take a look at how you can actually use these in practice. So we end up having these operators, and then we also have our comparison operators. And this is just to basically go, okay, is where we're at equal to some other location? For this, I'm going with just comparing straight up the links and the pointers to those links to see if we're at the same point in memory, not the links values. So basically I'm not doing something like, and in some cases you would actually want to do this little pointer and get the item out of it so as you could actually do it in that sort of a manner. However, that doesn't make sense, for example, in case we have a large number of ints in our linked list and we're sorting those ints because then as soon as we end up hitting one that has a zero and another one that has a zero, they're treated as equal. So that doesn't necessarily make sense to do. We care more about where they are in memory than what the actual values are. But you could end up doing this so as you compare values and in some iterator cases, that will actually make sense to do. Then we have over here our dereference operators, and these are what are going to allow us to actually modify what we're iterating over and what we're iterating at. However, there's a couple different ways. Either A, we could deal with pointer itself and just completely ignore this section here. And in that case there, we're able to modify that link in the chain. However, this allows us to also abstract and hide how the linked list is actually implemented so as that we end up only using the items within that linked list. We don't ever actually allow you to end up accessing the links directly. So we end up hiding those away and end up abstracting them out behind these iterators. And that's really all you have to do. There is an important thing to note though, and that's that, and we're just going to hop on down here, there are some very common methods, and I've only given us four of the common ones, and really there are two variants on two methods. But typically nearly every one that has iterators is going to have a begin and an end, and they're going to have these cbegin and cends, which are just constant versions of the begin and end. So basically where you can't modify whatever happens to be within this iterator here. And actually, I don't need this const here because that actually is incorrect. That was an earlier implementation change before I created this class here. And what you want to do, and really the only difference between the non-constant version and the constant version is that these ones here need to be marked constant. So basically what you're getting back from them, the return value, is a constant return value. So you return an item, but you don't allow anyone to modify that item, and if they try to, it will give them a compile time error. And you can see in here how we end up doing this, and there are some different ways in which we could do this. For now, I'm just creating a brand new linked list iterator and returning it. If you wanted to, you could actually have these basically as some private variables that every time you end up inserting or popping something off, these end up getting updated so as that they end up pointing to the first item and the last item in the chain, because that's really all that they're doing. And there's more to it, but we'll get into that in the next episode, 
when we discuss how we can actually use these iterators in order to go over and look at the different elements in a list, as well as also for things such as strings, how you can copy from one string into another string using iterators. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.